How's it going everyone? Got a lot to cover in this video. We're coming off of the Game Awards, but there are some other news topics that I definitely want to go over regarding PlayStation, PlayStation game updates, and everything like that. Everybody loves them some Persona, at least I would like to think so, and Persona 3 Portable could be the series' next remaster, we'll talk that. A bunch of game updates, pray for the gods out of nowhere, Resident Evil Village could get new DLC, that's been teased by Jeff Keighley, we had the announcement of Sniper Elite 5, a couple other game announcements, Announcements, and we have an update on PlayStation. They have some patents for an automated system to detect trolls, of, of all things. And Sony looking to bring PlayStation now to mobile phones, according to a confidential Apple presentation. We'll see how that parlays into PlayStation's reported, um, you know, ideas for a subscription model going forward. But first of all, Persona 3 Portable could be the series' next remaster. That's according to blogger Zippo, who, as Nintendo Life points out, previously revealed Persona 4 Arena Ultimax before its announcement. So Persona 3 Portable is getting a multi-platform remaster, the user said. What platforms would that be? I would imagine Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, as well as PC. PlayStation 4, obviously working on PlayStation 5, um, would be nice to see an Xbox release as well. I would like everybody to be able to play Persona. Now, Persona 3 Portable is interesting because some people like it better than Persona 3. Um, it is presented in a different style given that it was originally designed for portable devices in mind. It came out on the PSP, so it does kind of streamline the experience a little bit. For some people, they're going to like that. For other people, they might not. Persona 3 as a whole is fantastic. I actually have a copy of of the original Persona 3, uh, the special edition, this is literally from like the 2004 or whenever it came out, still sealed, I like randomly picked it up one year because I saw it at like a Kmart, you remember, you remember those? Um, and I was like 20 bucks and I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna go grab that and it was literally like the version with the art book and I still have it sealed. Random note, uh, it's not the FES edition, which is kind of a bummer, the Persona, uh, Persona 3 FES is, in my opinion is the definitive version of Persona 3, that's the version I like the best. I also played P3 Portable and I had a great time with it as well. Persona 3 is kind of like the Persona title that gets lost in the conversation with Persona because a lot of people do give attention to Persona 4 and 5. 4 because it's accessible on PC through the golden release. It was also available on Vita and PS2, of course. Um, Persona 5, obviously, everybody can play it on the PlayStation 4 and that game is tremendous. Persona 3, on the other hand, a very good game. I'm sure it'll show its age a little bit, but if it gets a good enough remaster, it's still going to be a game that's going to hold up a little bit. And uh, it should be noted that P3P did have some additions, like you could play as a female protagonist as well, so that was kind of nice, and that does have some differences in the story's conclusion. So, you know, there were some benefits with Persona 3 Portable, but I still like the FES edition of the best that was out on the PlayStation 2. We'll see how this turns out. I would like to see a release of Persona 4 Golden, the PC version, on PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch as well. I don't know why that's not happening. Like, Atlas and Sega, I don't know, some things they do really, really really befuddle me to say the least like why is persona 5 only available on playstation 4 but then persona 5 strikers is on pc but then why is persona 4 golden only available on pc and not available on playstation or nintendo switch they have this ip that can generate them so much revenue and it already has generated them so much revenue but they segment these releases in very odd ways i'm sure there's some logic behind it and i don't know why that is like why is p4g exclusive to steam exclusive to pc and then or at least you know outside of the vita release and then why is you know persona 5 not available on pc why is it not available on nintendo switch given that that game did run on the playstation 3 the original playstation 3 so very very confusing to me hopefully uh you know everything will be streamlined and persona is just available as on as many platforms as possible because it's such a fantastic ip that you know the potential there is a pretty ridiculous okay moving on from that another jrpg edge of eternity launches february 10th 2022 for playstation 5 xbox series ps4 and xbox one it'll be dropping on nintendo switch on february the 23rd now this was a jrpg that was in early access on pc and steam for a very long time and then it finally got its full release back in june it currently has a mostly positive reception 2500 reviews 78 percent positive on that end and it's a pretty technically impressive jrpg it notes it wage epic turn-based battles as you follow darian and Celine on their quest to find a cure of to the all-consuming corrosion in the grand tale of hope and sacrifice created by a small team of passionate jrpg lovers 
Again, the game visually does look pretty good, and it notes an enthralling story filled with plot twists and heart-wrenching moments, a gorgeous fantasy world to explore epic battles with a unique and strategic turn-based combat system, charismatic and unforgettable characters, stunning soundtrack featuring Yasunori Mitsuda of Chrono Trigger and Xenoblade Chronicles fame, a crafting system, a fearless yet adorable be a beast to befriend, and 50 plus hours of gameplay. Hopefully it sees a smooth transition to consoles as well, and again, it'll be out early next year in February, but man, that February period continuing to get more and more stag. You hear Saints Row get delayed, and then another game gets scheduled for February, so hopefully it does well enough when it does drop. Alright, moving on from that... Pray for the Gods has been added to the PlayStation database, and the game was supposed to drop in 2021. Now, the game had also been rated on the Taiwan Ratings Board, as noted by Twixel, uh, Twisted Voxel in the past, and the game is available on Steam. It's a pretty cool game that's currently in early access. A very positive reception, 1183 reviews, 86% positive. This is a game that often gets compared to Shadow of the Colossus. Easy to see why, because you do have these gargantuan bosses to fight, but it's an open-world adventure game where you play as a lone hero sent to the edge of a dying frozen lane to explore and solve the secrets of a never-ending winner. Grapple, glide, and grab hold of massive beasts as you fight to survive and return the world to proper order. The game was done by No Matter Studios, and it's still in early access. It's been in early access since January of 2019, so a long time coming for this one as we're coming in the three-year mark of it being in early access. So hopefully... It does, you know, come at a pretty solid state, and it will also have PlayStation 5 hardware enhancements if you play on PS5. It's going to be dropping on PS4 and PS5, so um, this is a game that I've been following for quite a while. It's not one that I spent too much time with on PC. I did want it to get into its uh, final release and then try it out then, but, you know, very positive reception for a game in early access is relatively good, and the gameplay itself looks pretty good with a lot of different variety, and the grappling system does look pretty intuitive as well, so... Again, hopefully this drops soon on PlayStation, and it does get a little bit more buzz, because I would imagine that this would be a game that a lot of people would be all over, but right now, it honestly just doesn't have, like, the notoriety. Like, a lot of people just don't know about this game, but uh, with a PlayStation release, maybe a release on other platforms, that would probably change pretty quickly, and if it ultimately did see its full release, I would, again, imagine that that sentiment of people not knowing about it would change fairly quickly. Alright, moving on from that, Resident Evil Village could be getting some new content that has been teased by Jeff Keighley. Jeff Keighley has teased a new announcement or content related to RE Village that was showcased during the Game Awards 2021. Obviously, it was up for a number of awards and it was presented as one of the nominees for Game of the Year. There was a brief moment of new footage with Ethan in a third person view. Now, bear in mind, the game is in first person overlooking the castle. Now, uh, Jeff Keighley, I wouldn't think would do something like this without knowing that it would cause a lot of speculation. Like, the dude's not dumb. He knows what uh, things like that do. He knows that, you know, gamers look at, you know, they decipher tweets and things like that from Hideo Kojima. Obviously, that's going to point towards something. So we'll see about that. Resident Evil Village was a game that I thought incredibly highly of. Obviously, it's a game that you can also get very, very cheap these days, and I would highly recommend you to check it out. You can get it for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks if you do want it digitally on the PlayStation Store right now. So definitely something to check out. Moving on from that, some new game announcements. Sniper Elite 5 got a bit of a stealth announcement on this. PlayStation 5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, and PC in 2022. Day one on Xbox Game Pass. So, yo, Sony, if you're going to start your own subscription service, Microsoft ain't relenting with the Game Pass. It's going to be day one on Xbox Game Pass for console and PC, and you would have to think that it is going to be a full $60 game. So that is a sizable addition from Rebellion onto the Xbox Game Pass service. So, man, if you're trying to compete with Game Pass, Microsoft is putting a lot of eggs into the Game uh, Pass basket, so... That's going to be pretty rough, but Sniper Elite 5 itself, it notes the latest installment in the award-winning series. Sniper Elite 5 offers unparalleled sniping, tactical third-person combat, and an enhanced kill cam. Fight your way across the most immersive maps yet with many real-world locations captured in stunning detail and an improved traversal system that lets you explore more of the world than ever before. Set in France in 1944, the game does have you as a part of a covert U.S. Rangers operation to weaken fortifications along the coast of Brittany. Elite Marksman Carl Fairborn 
makes contact with the French resistance. Soon they uncover a secret Nazi project that threatens to end the war before the Allies can invade Europe Operation Kraken. Some of the images have come out and we did get a trailer for the game as well. It does note expansive campaign. Many real world locations have been uh, captured and you can take on the Nazi plot solo or work with a partner with improved cooperative play, advanced gunplay physics and traversal, high caliber customization, invasion mode, campaign drop in player versus player and co-op play. That's going to be interesting intense adversarial multiplayer and again as we mentioned at the top add um, an advanced kill cam and improved kill cam will be presented in the game and there are some gruesome gruesome kills in this game so not for the faint of heart if you haven't played the previous sniper elite titles but sniper elite 4 readily available on sale i believe it's on playstation now as well so you can play it that way but this one is scheduled for release in 2022 xbox game pass subscribers will get it day one next up we have dakar desert rally that's been announced for ps5 xbox series ps4 xbox one and pc this is coming from publisher and developer saber interactive and it is a rally racing game the biggest and most epic off-road rally racing adventure ever developed dakar, dakar desert rally captures the genuine speed and excitement of amaray sport organization's largest rally race on the planet featuring a wide array of licensed vehicles from the world's top makers including motorcycles cars trucks quads and ssvs the game notes an authentic rally experience seasons and dynamic weather and rescue in and repair the game is scheduled for release in 2022 coming to just about every platform outside of the nintendo switch and next up we also got the announcement of arcade racing title red out 2 so red out is getting a follow-up title pretty cool to see there and if you're a fan of arcade racers if you're a fan of titles like um a wipeout red out might be something that'll be right up your alley the fastest racing game in the universe red out 2 is a tribute to classic arcade racing racing games and the sequel to the critically acclaimed Red Out where racing through the dystopian wastelands of a semi-abandoned earth is one of the galaxy's most popular sports. Reach impossible speeds, key features note speed and control, extensive career mode, competitive multiplayer, comprehensive customization, and a jaw-dropping soundtrack featuring a lot of electronic music that'll probably really complement the game. Red Out 2 is scheduled for a release in 2022. If you're a fan of arcade racers, definitely keep this one on your radar. Alright, those are the game announcements. Do want to cover a couple of other things playstation patents automated system to detect trolls and disruptive players in multiplayer games okay this one is a little wild if they can figure out how to do it i mean that'd be quite nice uh, the patent describes a complex automated system for multiplayer games. The system starts by identifying disruptive in-game events as they happen or even predicting the potential for disruptive events in preparation for tracking them when they happen. Now, an idea like this is good in theory. A lot of the things they do to stop like troll behavior or people, you know, rage quitting in like ranked play or something like that. Like I've been playing a lot of Halo Infinite recently and um, that game's... Uh, ranked ban system and everything like that uh definitely requires a little bit of work given that you know people getting disconnected uh without their own volition and then they just get banned from the game for an extended period of time when the game has been you know messing up on them or whatever the case may be i know it's probably a very difficult thing to tackle and i'm probably you know making it sound easier than it is i just don't know if it's that easy to really implement a system that can identify disruptive in-game events as they happen or even predicting them beforehand but hey give sony credit if they can pull it off it's definitely something that i would like to see more moderation especially for somebody that plays uh played quite a bit of ranked play in the past you know like trolling behavior just got really annoying in like a league of legends or something like that where you know whatever happens in game and then somebody starts raging gets relatively toxic like i can find humor in it i never like uh, really get too upset it's just like it is what it is it's the state of things and i try to find humor in situations like that but i can understand uh if you're playing league of legends and you're trying to rank up and all of a sudden somebody's running it down middle uh yeah that might not be the most fun thing in the world but you know it's just something that i would imagine is relatively difficult to actually combat at the best um you know at the highest level because there's just so many variables you have to account for and creating an automated system. That's the key. The, an automated system, I would have to think, would be relatively difficult. But hey, we'll see if they can pull that off. And also, PlayStation Now, a hot topic of discussion given that it does look like Sony has got their, uh, you know, codename Spartacus subscription service on the horizon, potentially during spring of 
2022. But according to The Verge and a, a confidential document founded by them from the Epic vs. Apple trial, Apple had insider knowledge of Sony's upcoming launch. Apple had heard about a not yet announced mobile extension of an existing streaming service for PlayStation users streaming access to over 450 plus PlayStation 3 games to start and PlayStation 4 games to follow. Now, this is going to be interesting if this codename Spartacus does ultimately have the vision that Microsoft has with Game Pass because yes, Microsoft is definitely in the Xbox business, but they are looking at it more broad where they're bringing it to PC, they're bringing it to phones. I believe the idea is to bring it to smart TVs as well. They want to get it everywhere with the combination of Game Pass and then uh, cloud streaming and everything like that, cloud gaming. Um, their vision is pretty grandiose, and I don't know where Sony's going to be looking to head if they're really trying to put their eggs in a bunch of different baskets, but uh, really expand PlayStation Now or whatever their subscription service is named into a bunch of different platforms, but that's definitely the idea that Microsoft has, and I think Microsoft is always going to be in the Xbox business, but what Xbox really is in the future, we're talking a decade, two decades from now? I don't exactly know, but it's going to be an interesting evolution to monitor for sure. But that's going to do it for me. Again, a lot of information covered here. Persona 3 Portable getting a remaster. Let me know. Would you rather prefer Persona 3 Portable or Persona 3 FES? I think people go back and forth on that. Edge of Eternity launches February 10th for PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, and X1. Pray for the Gods, hopefully coming to PSN soon. Resident Evil Village potentially getting some new content. Sniper Elite 5 coming in 2022. Desert Rally coming in 22. Dakar Desert Rally, that is. Red Out to an arcade racer coming playstation trying to combat trolls and disruptive players we'll see how that turns out and uh the evolution of playstation now and the subscription service from playstation definitely going to be an interesting story to monitor over the next 16 months or so that's going to do it for me sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.